Hey guys, it's Nick here, and as some of you may have seen on my blog, I was away last weekend, hence why there was no video. Um, yeah, so I was away last weekend with my boyfriend because we went away for the weekend on a little trip to the seaside to celebrate our seventh year anniversary. Um, so today I thought I would do a little, a little video about planning a trip uh, with a disability. So the first thing that I always think about when I want to plan a trip um, is probably the same thing that everybody thinks about which is where do I want to go? Do I want to go to the seaside? Do I want to go to a city? Do I want to stay in the UK? Do I want to go abroad? All that sort of stuff. And I know that everybody thinks about that first um, but I think about it for perhaps some different reasons to somebody who wouldn't necessarily have mobility problems because I have to think about is a place full of hills? Is it flat? How easy is it to get around? How big is it? because I have to decide whether or not I want to go on a trip where I can take my walking frame and probably manage to walk around all day without too much difficulty as long as there's plenty of rest breaks or am I going to go somewhere where there's a lot of walking and sightseeing and things like that where I might need to take my wheelchair if I am taking my wheelchair then I can go to a place that's slightly hillier whereas if I'm on my walking frame then it's obviously a lot better for me to choose somewhere that is fairly flat um, and fairly small and compact and easy to get around so probably a little seaside town rather than a big city if I'm taking my frame if I'm taking my wheelchair then obviously I can go to a big city like a capital city or something and spend days out longer so the next thing I like to think about and this might again sound really obvious is where do I want to stay now um, I've spoken before about the problems I have when it comes to um, showering in non-adapted showers and bathing and things like that. So um, obviously this will all sort of depend on how long I'm going for. If I'm going for more than a couple of days then I would need to try and find um, somewhere that had an adapted shower room. Uh, like a walk-in shower unless of course I'm going with my boyfriend or my family and then they might be able to lift me in and out of the bath and help me bathe if I could uh, just get somewhere that doesn't necessarily have an adapted shower but does have a bath and um, obviously if I'm going with my friends then an adapted shower is preferred because I don't sort of want to put upon my friends they would have to help me get in and out of a bath Whereas I know my family and my boyfriend don't mind because they've been doing it for years. Don't think my friends would mind either, but um, obviously I'm probably not going to be as comfortable around them seeing me getting in and out of a bath for obvious reasons. Uh, if I'm only going somewhere for like a weekend, like say the Friday and coming back the Sunday like I did last weekend, then an adapted bathroom doesn't really matter because I'll shower at home in my adapted bathroom before I... Um, before I leave and then again on the Friday on the Sunday even as soon as I get home so that just means the day in between the Saturday I can sort of just get a little wash in the sink or something and take some dry shampoo for my hair because um, obviously I can't really just stick my head in a shower um, so that's another thing stairs it's pretty similar if I'm taking my wheelchair and I'm going for more than a couple of days then obviously it's better to go somewhere with a lift whereas um, if I'm going on my walking frame usually somebody can fold it up for me and it's small enough to take into the room with us so we don't necessarily need a bigger room or a place with a lift because I'm quite lucky I can get up and down the stairs as long as the handrail and people there to help but obviously if I was going in the longer term or on my own or in my wheelchair or somewhere that was really high up a lift would be preferred. A couple of the things that I pack in my bag um, Obviously, I, I wish I had a bag with me to show you, um, but I unpacked my uh, weekend away case already. Maybe I'll do a what's in my bag video for a weekend away at some point soon or whenever I next plan a trip away. Um, some of the uh, things that I like to consider is how much I can take. If I'm going with my family and we're going in a car or we're going for a longer period of time, um, obviously I can take more, but a lot of the time, uh, if I'm going with my friends or my boyfriend, uh, we try and go places on the train, which means that I try and limit myself to like one rucksack 
of stuff because obviously I can't carry my own bag which means that either it'll have to go on the back of a wheel my wheelchair which a rucksack will fit nicely over or um, one of my friends will offer to carry it for me so I try and travel fairly light so I often take like a onesie instead of like top and bottoms pajamas because they take up less room um, you know I'll try and take a lot of dresses because they're smaller and lighter for the person who's carrying them because obviously I don't want to lumber them with a really big heavy bag if I can help it um, and sometimes if I think we're going to have access to a microwave um, or if I'm staying certainly with another family member rather than on holiday or at a friend's house I'll try and remember to take one of these which yes this is a panda um, but it is also actually one of the wheat bags that I love. I made a video introducing everybody to my panda a, long, a little while ago when I bought him and it's a wheat bag and you pop it in the microwave and it gets all warm and toasty and it can help with things like um, sort of easing aches and pains and comfortness and things like that. Uh, obviously also staying in a bunk bed is not really part of the question for me unless I can stay in the bottom bunk but these are just a few of the things that I like to consider. I also have to think if I'm going to need to take any disability related um, gadgetry with me which I'm quite lucky don't usually need to take some. Uh, occasionally if I'm going uh, somewhere like when I uh, went abroad I would take I took my um, wheelchair and my walking frame with me but obviously if I'm sort of staying in the country in the UK then I, it would be preferred that I would only take one so I have to sort of really consider which of these ones I would take and I have to consider sort of which bag I can take and how much I can carry and all those um, kinds of things and I have to make provisions obviously if I'm booking I'm, I haven't been the one to take care of assistance at airports yet which is making me really nervous because I've never had to do it any tips and advice in the comments down below would be very welcome. Obviously, I, if I'm going by the train, I make sure to plan um, book assistance on the trains there and back. Um, and if I'm going by car, take my blue disabled free parking badge with me um, so that we can park in disabled car spaces. So they're pretty much my tips and things I think about when I'm planning a trip. Um, regards to me as a disabled person obviously there are other things I consider that aren't disability related like what I would like to do, where I would like to go etc etc but those are the things that I plan um, regarding disability uh, so if you have any other tips and things that you like to think about when you're planning a trip away let me know in the comments down below or get in touch with me at any of the social media links you will find in the description box that's it for today if you like this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye guys!